Okay, we're here today on realagriculture.com at Crop Week in Saskatoon. Uh, we're here with Jeff Just from Case IH. Jeff, what do you do at Case? I'm a product support manager, a manager of field service operations is my title. I uh, call on dealers and customers uh, supporting the product, dealing with uh, warranty issues, product issues. Um, I also do uh, customer clinics, whether it be uh, service clinics or machine settings. Throughout the year, uh, a lot of times at dealers I do uh, combine clinics where we discuss uh, how the machine works how we, the settings to make it work properly and to fine tune it. Uh, customers look for this, especially before harvest, to make their machines perform at their optimum level. Okay, so Jeff, we're in front of a combine. Uh, we're going to talk about combines. Uh, this is, you know, some people have already purchased them. Some people are thinking about uh, purchasing combines. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that they need to consider. Uh, the first is, uh, there's always that decision, do we want to go with a conventional or a rotary? Obviously Case has a rotary. Why would a farmer choose a rotary combine? Choosing a rotary combine, uh, the, this basic, you want a rotary is grain quality. If you're, for grain quality, the, the Case combine does the best job for you out there in the industry as far as uh, the fewest cracks. Uh, the sample, you get a better sample, uh, less uh, dockage, and uh, the, th the throughput. It's The whole industry has migrated to uh, rotary combines. The competition fought it for a lot of years, but they have their own now, and uh, that's generally what, what we're seeing out there. Conventional combine, we see that in more niche markets. Guys that, uh, especially running a lot of cattle in that, where they need to bale the straw, you get a better straw quality out of a conventional combine than a rotary. A rotary does tend to smash up the straw more because of the grain-on-grain, uh, -grain, material material thrashing principle of a rotary combine. So this is, you know, these are uh, some of the decisions a person has to make with the machines. Uh, in the past, uh, conventional combines had the throughput in tough conditions. They were always kept going and would put it through better, but advancements with the uh, AFX rotor has got rid of the rumble. Uh, it's helped our throughput on the rotary combines. Uh, so in tough conditions, that no longer is, uh, is an issue. So when you do get tough conditions, these machines will still put it through and do a better job for you in thrashing and then again, grain quality, grain sampling. So in terms of uh, the next decision, once you've decided on that, the next decision is usually, well, how big a combine are we going to get? And, and like most things, uh, you know, the bigger the motor, the bigger the power, the more uh, excited we get. But sometimes, you know, the biggest combine isn't the best fit for all farms. So what kind of process should farmers go through in terms of selecting combine size? Well, combine size, uh, on the different classes of combines, you usually have a, a rough acres per hour you can do with them. Um, combines are running now if there are there's a lot of times customers come to us and they say well they're running three combines and want to go to two I want to go to a bigger machine will these two be the same capacity as what I've been running with the three combines and again we can give them guidance in that uh, if they pick up the land base you know how, if they pick up a certain amount of acres how much more are they going to need uh, capacity wise to uh, complete their harvest in a timely manner and the other thing I guess that I always always tell customers is when they do take the big step up, when they go from a class six to a class eight combine as far, I caution them on their grain handling to get the grain away from a machine. Uh, I see that many times, a guy goes up to a bigger machine and all of a sudden you don't have the grain handling capacity and customers agree with me and I tell them if, if you have a big machine sitting waiting for the grain cart or the truck, you might as well have your smaller machine and going all the time. And that's that's a big factor that guys, that customers are caught unaware of sometimes. And then it does, then they have to uh, re reevaluate their uh, grain handling, especially when you go to these large high capacity machines. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Jeff. You're welcome.